focuses on the key barriers to this type of investment, namely political will and finance. If we want sustainable infrastructure, then we need sustainable business plans. Enduring investment and income are as crucial as architectural design or technology. It can help transform an urban area into one where people enjoy congregating, which provides shade, tranquility, and inspiration. And perhaps most importantly, one which enhances biodiversity and access to nature, something which has been shown to be so important during the pandemic. So the question is, how do we move from the paperwork to the projects? And that's the question for us today. I'm optimistic, though. Pessimism is for better times. So today, I wish you all the very best in your discussions, and I hope that what is discussed today helps fund sustainable development tomorrow and in the years to come. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you for inviting me to do this. I, I really appreciate it. Like I took up the post in Southend at the end of, of January, so I'm very much the, the new guy. Uh, I don't know how long it is before I can say well, I can have to blame it on my predecessor when things go wrong, uh, which, is, uh, which I'm sure we're doing at Watford now. Well, that's Rabbit's fault, never mind. Um, interesting listening to the opening speech here from the Alderman in relation to the, the, the City of London and green infrastructure and sustainability uh, and the Covid. Uh, I often ask the question when I'm doing lectures, doing many lectures, etc. Can you imagine if we had no green spaces during COVID? Can you just imagine what we would have done, where we would have gone, and how that would have affected our mental health? It just does not bear, bear thinking about. And that's something that we, we as local authorities, we as advocates for local authorities, really need to keep pushing around the importance of green open spaces uh, and green infrastructure. I think the other thing which you, you, you mentioned um, is when you look at London as a whole, uh, and I, like Sam Park historians, William Pitt, in 1808, describing uh, the parks of London, the Royal Parks, and the Royal Parks that were under threat as the lungs of London were in Back in 1808, even now we're still we're still talking about the importance of parks and green spaces, and still having to persuade politicians how, how important that, that, that they are. Uh, and I think the other thing that um, that I, I I can reflect on is, if, I'll come on to South London in a minute. Um, looking at London, you know, a national park city with one of the green spaces that you have. You have the, uh, the um, Daniel Raymond Ellison, who was the urban gorilla. Uh, I think it's a great title. I'm going to ask the urban dance man. Uh, the urban gorilla looking at how green spaces as a network could work together across the city of London. That's something that we're very much looking at in, in, in South End, uh, very much so uh, these days. And I think finally, before I get into my notes, um, who watched the Jubilee concert the other night? Yes. Yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? Apart from Rod Stewart, it was a bit dodgy, wasn't he? But um, it was pretty good. But when you listen to Prince Charles and Prince William's speech around sustainability and green infrastructure and, and open space and nature, how important uh, it, you know they, they showed it. We just need to look at the things that were portrayed onto Buckingham Palace. So again, really a bit right up to Prince Charles. We're still talking about it, how important it is, particularly today. As far as this, this, this workshop is concerned, um, I think it's really important. I'm glad to see some of the people have come together today. Uh, and I just want to emphasise that coming together and working in partnership, and again, think work, you know, South have been working in partnership with a number of authorities, Cambridge being, being one of them as, as, as part of the Interact 2 project. And I think the great thing about working together is what we learn and collaboration. I think that's really, really important. We're doing that in, in South End. We now have a launch at Innovation Centre, uh, which is in incredibly successful looking at climate resilience and the importance of green infrastructure to South as a whole, particularly around uh, new developments. And as we all know, going back to William Pitt, um, the impact of development uh, on our society today uh, and how we incorporate green infrastructure is incredibly important. Um, also, the way we design and build reducing carbon emissions, looking at buildings like this, looking at new buildings, looking at how we develop society and the impact of carbon emissions, how we can enhance biodiversity, increase water retention and improve flood management, all incredibly important things that we you know that are coming out of this piece of work that we've, we've been doing. Uh, and the other thing that's really important is research. Uh, I mean I've worked in parks for 33, 34, 34, a long time. 
uh, and the amount of research that has been done over many, many years into green infrastructure, now particularly to climate change, uh, and the impact of it is vastly, vastly important. That research then has to go up to political politicians and leadership, and we need to show leadership that shows how important this is, and we need to continue to persuade our leaders and our political heads, uh, particularly at local authority level, the importance of what it is that we're doing. Uh, and, and finally, I really want to, I'm a, new, I'm a new guy, so this is new to me as far as what you're doing here. I just want to congratulate you on, on the development and the evolution of the business model which you're releasing today, is that right, Anna? That's coming. Are you going to play with it today? Are you going to play with it today? I'm not going to be here to play with it, I love playing. Um, so the importance of that business model today, so you're going to see, you're going to play around with it today and, and, and see the importance and the, the impact of that. Uh, and just applaud the fact that you're all here, and I hope today you get a lot out of it and take away a lot out of it, because uh, there's one thing that we can do is we can make that change, which is really, really important. So, well done. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for very much for joining us, and thank you very much as well to our two opening speakers. I started work at South London City, what was then Borough Council, um, in September 2019. And I was ecstatic to be given the role of managing the Nature Smart Cities project. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to the project today um, before we really get down to business and look at the Nature Smart Cities business model. So, the Nature Smart Cities project is an EU Inter 2 Cs funded project. Um, the overall combined value of the project is 6.38 million. And the project brings together um, 11 partners across four countries. Um, we have three academic research-based partners, um, the University of Antwerp, who are here today, um, Imperial College London, also represented today, and the University of Ghent. And then we have what we call our eight city partners. These are um, local authority partners from cities and towns across our four countries. And the idea is that we've worked together to really bridge that gap between scientific research and practical use to create a tool, to create a business model that really is grounded in the needs of local authorities. We know that there's lots of tools that have already been made, but many of them have lacked that bridge that really contributes to their use in the long term. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use that video to introduce the project to you. Some of you may already have seen it um, if you attended our first workshop, um, but if you haven't, hopefully um, this is an interesting, quick insight and introduction to the project. Around three quarters of Europeans live in cities. Many of these cities are dealing with the effects of climate change, such as heat stress, air pollution, and flooding. The high density of paved surfaces, roads and buildings further increases these effects. We can do something about this. Trees, rain gardens, green roofs and walls and other vegetation help to cool cities on hot summer days, capture heavy rainfall and improve air quality. Research shows that green infrastructure provides a range of other benefits such as increased biodiversity and improved human health. However, cities often find green infrastructure expensive or difficult to implement. The Nature Smart Cities project aims to support cities to address these challenges. Eight city partners and three academic partners in the UK, Belgium, the Netherlands and France have joined forces. Together, we will develop a business model to promote green infrastructure solutions, bridging the gap between research and practice. The model is based on evidence that we collect through interviews with local authorities and analysis of geographical, biophysical and economic data. We also review existing valuation tools and finance options. The model is tested, validated and refined through seven green infrastructure pilots Southend-on-Sea, Cambridge, The Hague, Capella, Antwerp, Bruges and Lille. A step-by-step -step methodology will support cities to use this business model to implement green infrastructure and build climate resilience. For more information, visit our website 
naturesmartcities.eu. Please let me know um, and we can 